earlier this season, you and Dennis go to counseling, but he doesn't seem as receptive to it as you are. I mean, coming to counseling is just a, you know, it's a lot. And, yes, you work. Know, like, I'm not the only one that's got to do some work. Absolutely. So, like, you know, we've so talked you... about me and me and me and me and me and me and me for the longest, but, like, Portia also has to do some work. Like, I can't read her mind. You know, I think going to counseling is something that everybody thinks of. Oh, you broke up, you got to go to counseling to get back together. So I think initially that's what he thought. I think once we got there and... It's hard. It's he hard realized work. this is the real <laughs> yeah. deal. Like, you can't just come in here and say, yes, this is what I did. Now can we get over it? No. We got to get to the underlying issues of why it happened and how it can never happen again. Once he got into counseling and he saw how real the process was, and he realized that it could be a, a true benefit to the relationship, he was definitely, he, he's now an advocate for mm -hmm. counseling. When he told me he cheated because of postpartum depression, that I, I took it and it rolled right off my back like water off of a duck's back because, first of all, we still had sex. He was my biggest support system while I was going through it. So all of that, I knew that he, that was just something that maybe had a piece of it, you know, but I knew that wasn't the whole reason of why he had stepped out. You know, people, when they talk about infidelity, they try mm -hmm. to make up these big, big, deep reasons. And really what it was could have been that we had got together so fast and this chick was still there and maybe I wasn't you know, around and he just went back and just made a phone call. It can be really simple. It doesn't have to be that deep. I think once we kept going to counseling, it came to you did it because it was selfish and because that's something you wanted to do. And he found out some things about me that we had never talked about before. What are some of those things that you think really resonated with him that help him understand? Understand. Seeing me be vulnerable. Dennis, it's just been really hard. You know, all these choices that I've had to make, I've been having to be strong because we have a daughter. He had never really seen me be that vulnerable because as a mom, I was not gonna let him see that part of my exterior. He was not gonna know that he had broke me. He was not gonna know it was gonna be, you need to get your shit together, that's what it is. But he needed to see that he had really, really hurt me. And that through seeing me be hurt, he could see that everything I had given him was real. Mm -hmm. And that you are about to throw all of this away. So I think that's when he really got it. And it was like, all right. Okay, what do I gotta do? I gotta do anything. Yeah. And whatever I gotta do to make sure that this woman doesn't. I don't think my he life. Did, he just ever had a woman like you and no. a family like this, yeah. right? Yeah. He had to learn that, oh my gosh, this yeah. is so real. And you can lose it. You can lose you it. You can lose it. You know, I when I look back, I did have a pattern of ignoring some signs. You know, Dennis like color hair, honey, so I get to be wild. Mm -hmm. I was blonde yesterday. I changed it up for Mr. Dennis. Yeah, he said, honey, I think I feel like I'm dating several I'm different women. <laughs> I know people that have kicked it with Dennis before, and that he's tattooed different girls that I know name on him. I joked about it. I mean, he got so many damn tattoos, it may be a name I'm looking at every day. Probably. <laughs> I did have a pattern of even saying out loud, ignorance is bliss. You know, I don't want to yeah. know. I'm just happy with you. We are yeah. good. I love you. I don't care about your past. I don't care. I'm not asking all those questions. She be asking me all these questions. What did he get married before? What did he? I'm like, bitch, I ain't asked none of this shit. I've been enjoying my good man. It's probably some other bitch done asked him all them questions and she's somewhere by herself. You don't realize when you're saying all that stuff like that, it lands somewhere. Yeah. And it was landing with him probably in a way to it's like, if I do something, I could just apologize. So it, this was like the first time of like me really putting my foot down and getting him to truly understand that, you know, we are building a family and it is serious. This is a real deal. And I will walk away for the sake of my daughter and making sure that I am sane in my mind and that yeah. I can take care of my child. Mm -hmm. And so how are you both doing now? I'm just comfortable still figuring it out. I rushed it already, okay? We already did that. We ran the sprint race already. We got, you know, we won that prize, mm -hmm. okay? We won the sprint. <laughs> okay, now, now I'm taking my time and we are working on 
us, the relationship as parents, and figuring it out. It's not something that just goes no. away. I mean, he has definitely had to pay his dues with the situation. You know, this is like, you, what, the P PTSD, is that what it's called? Yes. You have flashbacks on yeah, somebody. You, you could just watch something on TV and be like, I'm <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it is not, it's not an easy road, and anybody, the only thing that I can rest assured and, and not be embarrassed is that I know anybody out there who has been through this knows exactly what the real deal yep. is. Going through this on national TV has also done another thing for me. I don't care what anybody thinks. Yeah. I don't care that I'm engaged and we don't live together and what someone else may say because you need to do what you need to do for your life and I'm gonna do what I need to do and feels comfortable for me and my family. And you know, and that's all I can do. Nini, you say there's an alliance between Candy, Kenya, and Cynthia. Tell us about that. Why those two? Why would Candy be an alliance with Kenya? I'm not questioning you. I just want to understand uh, why. Because, see, what Kenya will do, Candy won't do. Okay, so Kenya is okay with being the villain. She's okay with talking shit, you know, and that's something that Candy doesn't want to do because she doesn't want to be seen that way. Mm. So they make a great partnership, and Cynthia right in there with them. You think Candy's the ringleader of the alliance? I don't know, but I know they're in an alliance. And I don't care what they say and what anybody else says, they will never change what I think, okay? They can tell me all day long that that's not it, but I really feel like they all the time, like, let her, those two let her get away with whatever. I feel like he might propose tonight. <gasps> No, you don't think he's gonna do it tonight. So when you're choosing your wine, so you completely ignore the meal that you're having with the wine. <laughs> no, because it comes. Oh, All this shit I'm doing, I don't need it. Candy, don't forget to do it. I need it. Seriously, had that, any of that happened to me, I, had I done any of that, it would be pure, it would be news everywhere. Maybe I mean, Nene tried to ruin Cynthia's <laughs> engagement. And Cynthia, you need to stand up to Nene. You will be her lap dog if you don't. I really think they're in an alliance, <laughs> and I will always say that. This is something to think on here now. If they are, I am so disappointed. I don't know why you would be. So when did this first occur to you? When I saw the mic, the, 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 the audio that they caught. Past that, her and Candy were meeting me at a pizza place, and they were in the car, and she was calling Candy, and Candy said, I'm Mike, I'm Mike. And she said, I just want to make sure we're on the same page, and that, you know, whatever she was saying over her mic. Yeah, hello? Hey. I'm, I'm Mike, Mike, I'm Mike. I just wanted to make sure we're on the same page. It's setting up how Candy got here. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Kenya gives me, I don't know, she just don't give me, like, her and Candy would really be buddy buddies like that. I don't see anything they have in common. I don't see her hanging <laughs> with Carmen and Mama Joyce just over at the house on a Saturday. Girl, let me go in the refrigerator and eat something. The way they act like they're so close, it's like, huh, I don't know about that. No, she's not that kind of friend. I think everything is a chess move. It's Cause she, she was knows. never friends with Candy. She was always friends with, Candy was always friends with Phaedra and Phaedra and Kenya never got along. So now that Phaedra is gone, I think Kenya thought it was a great idea. Like it was a smart move. Beneficial for her. Yeah, to just be friends Easy with Easy going, Candy. she's not a yeah. hell raiser. So she knew Candy, she could just manipulate Candy, Candy go up there and rally for her. Kenya needs to come back on the show. You know, that kind of stuff. So she, it was, she was doing a business, she was a politician child. <laughs> she was that's politicking. It. Yeah, that's it. Well, it worked. She went it around works. the politician burst because she got a bad. It works. <laughs> so have you heard Nene say that there's an alliance between the two of you? She was talking mad crap. The only thing I saw was the clip where she said online where she was saying that um they she said that we were an alliance, me, you, and Cynthia, and she was telling people they need to watch us. Okay. Yeah, but what are you watching for? We're friends. Like what what are you watching for? I mean, I don't know. But I'll tell you what I saw. And, That's and, the only part I saw. I didn't and see And it's not an alliance else. with her and Marlo? who licks the ground and, anyway. The ladies like to use the word lapdog quite a bit this season, don't you think? Oh, it's so true, it's true. Marlo, you need to be up here with me. Lapdog is.
I mean, they wrote me out, you know, for seasons. I'm her lap dog. I don't have my own mind. Yeah, but they why? They were thinking, the, oh, you're Nene's lap dog. You know, well, behind I mean, scenes, that I is tell you how that's I feel. a bunch of bullshit when people saying lap dog. I think that mm -hmm. that makes you guys feel some kind of way. That's why they say me feel they no say it to make way. you guys feel I some kind of way because obviously, I am no one is my lap dog. Why do mm -hmm. I need a lap dog? But I will say this. I'm a friend, you know I ride hard. You know I'm popping up at your house, I'm gonna be in my feelings. Mm -hmm. So I was, I ride hard. I help Guess you to what? stay so here. So you wanna build I'll someone you up stay and tear them no, down? No, you wanna build me up and tear me down the very first day. Help me, that's what you just did. Okay? That's what you just did. No, no, that's what you just did. No, I did not. You sit your ass on that dish next and talk that bullshit. What bullshit? My loyalty, I, I love all of them, but Nene, we're closer. She's told yeah. me a little more, but I'm getting to know the girls, and it does feel good. And I'm getting to know the one who you can't tell nothing to, of who course. you just have a good time with, yeah. the one you can talk business with, the one you can just kick it with. And right. I just realized with these girls, they fall in, they fall out. Hey, that, they let me just do. become friends that with who true. I want to become friends with. Every friend serves Without a different question. purpose. Yeah, but so I this think season, as a friend, it is nothing wrong with taking up for your friend and standing firm on that. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But now, I, you would want me to do that for you if all of them were riding the shit out of you. You would want me sitting there, that's my friend, and I'm not going to sit here and, roll and, and listen to you guys do the bullshit for your, your friend. Your ass don't always ride for me like that, though. No, you know, I <laughs> ride for you so you're, hard. You are clowning me around even now. Never. You ride for me, but you will kiki with them. Like, I know you're I mean, not you gonna cross me. You, you yeah. sat right in the whole scene with Portia talking about me and you laughed. That bitch oh, came for me so while I was sitting at home breastfeeding my child for no apparent reason. No, I didn't laugh. Now I'm not gonna so, laugh. I'm telling I'm gonna you, be quiet. you are only a lap dog if you take up for me. So they can take up for each other, you just being a good friend. So that's how one sided it is. The rules only apply to certain people without. Question. And this is among the women. I mean, in other areas too, but we just stick with the group. <laughs> You're so crazy. Okay. We're just gonna stick with the we'll group. We'll just stick with the group. Why do you think that the rules are different for you? What I think they're different for me because I came here first. They feel this way, not me. Like she's the big dog. I don't feel like I'm the big dog. I feel like they think I'm the big dog and they think <clears> if they <throat> don't stand up to me in some sort of way, then they don't look right. I mean, I don't know. What I've realized with this group of girls, everyone is strong, everyone is a boss. Yeah. And I do feel coming on, Nini's has been here since day one. Mm -hmm. You've made a way for us. You helped create this show. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. I tell you that all the time. Mm -hmm. But I just feel now all the girls have evolved. They, some of them can yeah. afford homes now. Some have cars. You know, they're living a luxury life to where they just feel like, I'm not gonna, they feel like they don't have to respect you as much or be quiet around you or tiptoe around you. They don't so have it's to just, tip, they should never tiptoe around me. They should never be but quiet. But it's not just but you, what they it's should everyone. Be, they should be fair. Yeah. When it comes down, because I don't come in starting anything with anybody. I feel like they all get together and be like, let's not let Nene in, because if she step in, she gonna overshine the whole situation. So it's on them, it's not on me. When I come in, they look like they done seen a motherfucking ghost. So every pedestal that I have been put on, they put me on it. They single-handedly did it. They gave me the jobs, these girls because they were constantly saying Nene. So everybody else was like, shit, if we gonna get anybody, we need to get Nene. <laughs> so silly. What, how would you describe your signature style, Candy? <sighs> Whatever I felt like putting on that day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really think I have like a signature style. I mean, I do tend to wear a lot of black. Yes. Um, I do tend to show a lot of cleavage, not on yes. purpose, but it ends up happening. You do too. No, you show way more cleavage <laughs> than me, honey. Because <laughs> yeah, your cleavage goes deep, but your cleavage goes all the way down like to that. the belly button. I like you the got D. the whole V out, okay? <laughs> I'll just give you top V. Jeez. Let's be clear. You had the whole plunge as Nate Gate. Cause I was scared if y'all would have got the fight and that oh, thing would have popped open. And yeah, and yeah. Everywhere. I kept and I remember <laughs> seeing. I kept like I kept checking. You remember I kept doing like that. I was like, okay, boobs better stay in place. Exactly. <laughs> so you do it too. But yeah, I I do tend to wear a lot of things that show cleavage. I mean, I just <laughs> like that outfit, and it just so happens to show cleavage. And then I like things that bring me in at the waist because I feel like yeah. I'm short. 
and I have big butt and big boobs. So if I don't have anything that comes in at the waist, then I do look bigger because, you know. Well, that's true. Eight, no, that's you know? true. You have to show a waist when you're curvy. Yeah. Or you just look like a big blob. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, true. I don't want to look like a big blob, so I tend <laughs> to wear something fitted somewhere, you know. Um, I definitely would she say definitely... there has been times in the past where I didn't know if it was going to go down or not. <laughs> so I would wear comfortable shoes so that just in case. Because <laughs> you never know, you know, in this group of girls, you know, things get, it escalates quickly. Yes. You know, and I prefer to wear pants on those days. <laughs> so if I wear pants and comfortable shoes and you decide that you want to pop off, then know that it could go down that day. <laughs> And comfortable shoes just means it's not a skinny heel, okay? So if, if it's a thicker heel, if it's a thicker heel or something I can pop off quick, you know, if I got on flats, you're really in trouble. Ooh, if she has on some tennis shoes, forget about forget it. Forget about it. Don't even come. She don't is come, ready. Don't say nothing crazy. Tanya, I think she is just, she's going to go to her grave as... The sweetest girl ever. That's yeah. Just who she is. And, but you know, those Canadians are just really nice people. I've never met one that I didn't personally like. I met a couple. And, well, <laughs> I actually get along with Canadians. And I feel like the thing that I like about Tanya is I think she's um, not like anyone else in, in the group. For sure. And I love that. And I feel like she's just who she is. And I, I think you put it best. She's very well intended. She know? is. Because I don't think, at the end of the day, we're human, right? So no one's going to get it right all the time. Absolutely. Even though that's the expectation from everyone in this circle is to be perfect, Right, the most right? wrong ones. Excuse my language. Right. But Tanya, like everything she does, she does it with good intentions, no Absolutely. matter how it falls down. So it's hard to really get mad at her. Well, you also mentioned that um, you just don't bring up Paul. Paul is where you mm -mm, see a change. That's yeah, that's like bringing up Noel. Paul is her trigger. That's what, what do you see? What, what do you see from Tanya when you bring up Paul? When you bring up Paul, Tanya, that's her man, that is her world, and she defends him. She is defensive about him, period. Like, if you're not saying Paul in a stellar light, don't bring up Paul. Exactly. Because there's an issue. When did her cherry get popped? Was it in, uh, where were we, in Tokyo? When the whole thing about, like, you know, we're talking about, you know, we're pulling those... Paul. Yes. Oh, I'm gonna marry her. Marriage and appointment are good. You I'll might marry chill. somebody else. No. Okay. Meaning you said something at the temple where you're like, you might marry someone else. It's not that serious now. That is my life partner. We will be together until the end. Well, I learned her trick. Yeah, Nini popped a cherry. That's what I realized. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this girl is nice all day, all night. Yeah. Then you bring up Paul. She ain't shy about telling She's me about shy. me. Listen, I might have something oh. on her. What? Oh! Let me see the wig. appreciate that because uh, bring up Mike if you want yeah, to. You're the, go. I feel like you're the same way about your mic. I feel like I'm definitely the same way about my mic. And, you know, just in terms of like relationships, like healthy relationships on the show, I really love your relationship with your husband. And I really love Paul and Tanya's relationship love because relationship. one of the things that was important to me when I started my new relationship with Mike is Friendship, like I need to be friends with my man. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Tanya and Paul are friends. I feel mm -hmm. like you and Mike are friends. Mm -hmm. And that's something that is like, hashtag couple goals for uh, Mike and I. Like we have to be friends first. Have and to. that, and we are. Cause the love part, that dwindles depending on what Tuesday it is. Right. But the friendship <laughs> will always, right. you know what I'm saying? Will always be there no matter yeah, what. Yeah, you have to be, yeah. you have to have friendship in your love life. Yeah. You, you do. Yeah.